Okay, so I want to talk about the book Box of Butterflies by Roma Downey. And this book is, you know, I thought it was an autobiography, but it's more like a devotional, I think, because it's filled with so many messages from God. And I think God is speaking through Roma's words in the book. And there's so many themes throughout the book, like the light and love of Christ, and courage, and compassion, and family, and motherhood. There are just so many themes that pop out throughout the book, but um, it's also filled with a lot of loss and tragedy, and um, you know, hardships. And so, uh, yeah, and it's really authentic. And the first chapter was about um, her life growing up in Northern Ireland and she was born on May 6, 1960 and she had a happy childhood uh, with her mother and father and her older brother and she talked about playing dress up and paper dolls and stuff but then and you know going out to eat with her mother and father but then when she was 10 she lost her mother because she died of a heart attack and um, and then she said that she felt like all the lights had been turned out because her mother was her mother would always um, you know make everyone laugh and just um, just fill the house with so much light and her father took her to see the gravestone right after her mother died and she brought pansies um, which were her mother's favorite flowers and a um, butterfly flew out of the pansies and her dad said look that could be your mother's spirit and I know it sounds kind of weird but um, it reminded her that uh, there's hope for Christians and that we're never alone and that um, you know God is with us and the angels are watching out for us and you know, people are in heaven looking down on us and every time she felt discouraged or alone she would see a butterfly at random places and that was just God reminding her you know that he's with her and um, you know even though she had that encouragement she still felt the emptiness of not having a mother figure and then so many years later when she started starring on Touch by an Angel and she said her co-star Della Reese was like her mother and it's kind of a funny story of how they met and um, Della Reese was in the uh, dressing room getting ready for the uh, pilot episode and you know Roma went to see her and she said, hi, I'm Roma, and she stuck out her hand and tell her, she was like, baby, I don't shake hands, I hug. And so that's how they met. And then my favorite part of the book was um, right after Delores had lost her daughter and they were taking, a, her and Roma were taking a walk, walk on the beach and Delores was like, isn't God wonderful? He brought, I always do, he brought me into your life because he knew you needed a mama, but what I didn't know was that he brought you into my life because I would need a baby girl. And I just love that, like, it's it's so true, you know, I think people become what we need them to be, but I also think that our relationships with people aren't dependent on the absence of other people. You know, I think they still would have had a mother and daughter relationship even if she hadn't lost her, uh, you know, biological mother. Or, Della uh, Reese lost her biological daughter and I just loved how that chapter is you know all about motherhood and the second chapter um, she talks about growing up during the civil war between the Protestants and the Catholics in Ireland and how that sparked in her the desire just to you know keep being kind and, and bring about peace in the world because she wanted you know, others to see what a true Christian is like. And she talked about the example of her father and how 
her father was uh, he he always supported her dreams and supported um, you know encouraged her and she ended up getting to this prestigious drama school in London because three people paid for her way and you know she was nervous about that but her dad said you know every night go out and look out the moon and I'll leave a message for you on the moon and it was just because they'd be looking at the same moon each night and so you know it was just a reminder that he loved her and um, one week or one month actually before she graduated her dad called her and you know he was excited for her graduation excited for her to come home after but uh, then later that night she got another call from her half brother and he said that her father had just passed away and which leads me to chapter three because um, she talked about um, how that was really uh, that gave her the courage to go to New York and act on Broadway you know because she wouldn't have had the courage if her dad had still been alive and you know she wouldn't have you know gone to Utah and been untouched by an angel and you know impacted so many lives if uh, her dad was still alive and she talked about how um, people would you know, just walk up to her and tell her how they were impacted by her portrayal of Monica and touched by an angel. And she told this one story of um, a mother who had um, lost, who just lost her child, and um, and the mother was, you know, came up to her and talked to her. And, um, she was telling Delores this story and. She was saying she needed God to send her a real angel. And Delory said, Who says he didn't? And she said um, in the book, uh, The dictionary defines angel as a spiritual being that serves especially as a messenger from God. We're all spiritual beings, and we all have the ability to be a messenger of God. And you know, it was something I didn't really think about before, but that we're spiritual beings. But it's so true because. God plants within us the desire to be spirit-filled and um, you know some people they just they uh, just don't realize it or they choose not to see it and but that's why we need to reach them so they do see it and she and um, her husband Mark Burnett uh, they did this by uh, producing the Bible series and um, they got a lot of criticism you know before that you know, people were saying oh it's not gonna work oh people are gonna watch it and then when they did produce it and it came out in 2013 um, you know it was so successful and it silenced those negative voices and um, you know, I think with them also producing the Bible series, I think, you know, um, it shows how God can use anyone because they weren't pretending to be, you know, these perfect Christians. They had both been through divorces and um, it shows like God can use, uh, God can turn the ashes of our lives into something beautiful and, you know, God can use our mistakes for his good and chapter four uh, she talked about love and her daughter oh, she first talked about her daughter Riley and her daughter was born during the Touched by an Angel series and you know, so they had to hide her pregnancy obviously and she said that her daughter uh, filled the hole in her life from the pain of losing her mother and, um, but she, her, um, marriage to Riley's father didn't last, and they ended up divorcing when Riley was two, and so Riley grew up 
with her mother, you know, as her best friend, they did everything together. And after the Touched by an Angel series ended, she moved um, from Utah to back to Los Angeles. And Della Reese came to visit her one day and said, isn't it time you find a new love in your life? And so she went uh, a few weeks later, she uh, was at a salon and getting a pedicure. And she kept noticing Mark and she kept, uh, you know, looking up at him and he noticed her every time. And after that, um, they both asked the receptionist about each other when they left. And a couple of days later, she got a phone call from the receptionist and asked, the receptionist asked if it was okay if she gave up her contact information. And there's Mark who wanted it. And so they ended up going on a date and they ended up marrying and blending their two families. He had uh, two sons already and she had the daughter. So um, she also talked about um, how, you know, she created a family on the Touched by an Angel series, she created a family on the Bible series, and how Diago Morgado, who played um, Jesus on the Bible miniseries, was, um, had worked his way into her and Mark's heart, and she was like his mother, and, you know, she played older version of Mary in the Bible series, so their mother and son chemistry was just so natural. And in chapter five, uh, she talked about creating um, AD, the Bible Continue series after the Bible series. And they took uh, their son, Cameron, along with them, who was, was in his last year of high school. And he wanted to, um, he, want, he was interested in film. And so he took the semester off and decided to come with them. But he got really sick and the doctor said it was a brain tumor. And so that time of their life, the months that he was sick, was about, uh, you know, crying out to God and just, you know, asking God, why, why would you do this? And all about, you know, just listening to God, you know, learning to listen to God. And Jesse said um, in the book, we are a nation of doers rather than human beings. We are human doings. We work and strive and talk and move and go, go, go. But if we want to be at peace, we must stop. Stop our working. Stop our talking. Stop even our praying. Breathe in, breathe out. Make space. Listen to the whispers of our hearts. It is only in the quietness, in the stillness, that we can hear the voice of God. And I think that's so true because, um, like, I thought it was weird at first because I was like, stop our praying. What? But most people think of uh, praying as just talking to God and they don't really think of listening. But you know, it's only when we listen to God that we can um, appreciate, you know, the gratitude, you know, and be grateful for the things around us and you know, everything He's given us, the blessings. And um, <clears throat> chapter 6 was all about gratitude. And she talked about uh, every day untouched by nature when she'd walk, wake up in the morning, she'd say, thank you, God. And, you know, she just continued this pattern up till now and um, she talked about her um, work with Operation Smile and how the children you know whose parents couldn't pay for an operation for them were just so grateful and she was impacted by their gratitude and their hugs and their kisses and if they can be grateful you know why can't we be grateful for everything we have and chapter 7 was about home and she talked about um, you know, how this life we're just passing through to our real home, which is heaven. And um, she talked about wanting to return to a place you couldn't, the homesickness for a home you couldn't return. And I can relate to this because my home is a missionary center in the Philippines, which no longer exists. And she wanted to return to the happy place with her mother and father uh, of her childhood. And you know, I just found this so relatable. I found this book so relatable and just so inspirational. And I would recommend this book for everyone, but especially for mothers and daughters.